and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some Demir Forge. Um, this is a deck that's built around Mystic Forge, as you can see here, and uh, playing a lot of artifacts off the top of our library, a lot of colorless cards off the top of our library. So the colorless cards that we got, we got Steel Overseer, Golden Egg, and Guild Globe. These are like kind of the the heart of the deck with our two two mana artifacts. Um, the reason why the two mana artifacts are so important is because my top end, besides Mystic Forge, is about Ugin. And Ugin has our colorless spells cost two less to cast. So if we have um, Ugin in play, then these things cost zero mana. And so we can just play them off of the top of our library for free whenever we have Mystic Forge in play. So we can turn into like an affinity deck, um, basically. So that's that's kind of like what we're trying to do here. We got um, Demir Affinity Forge here. And then we just, you know, spew a bunch of artifacts off the top. We also have this Stone Coil Serpent that we, you know, we can just say it, it can just be a 2-2 two -two also. Um, so we can play like these uh, 16 cards for zero mana whenever Ugin is in play. And, you know, try to get a whole bunch of artifacts in play. Each If we have a Sahili, each time we play an egg or a Guild Globe, whonever we have a Sahili, we make an additional 1-1, uh, uh, which, you know, can get bigger with the help of Steel Overseer that puts counters on all of our artifact creatures. And so if we can just litter the, the battlefield with artifacts, which is what the point of our deck is, then, boom, we have Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge, that plus two ability with Tezzeret um, that, you know, has the ability to deal X damage to each opponent or X the number of artifacts you control, you gain X life. So that claw, it's a sweet animation. That's what our deck is about, trying to get this claw going on. And plus, if we have, if we have Tezzeret in play, and we have six, so that, that first line, what it says, creatures and planeswalker spells you cast have affinity for artifacts. So we also have that, that top line. Um, if we have Tezzeret in play, so all of our creatures cost um, an amount less equal to the number of artifacts we control. That's what affinity for artifacts. I guess it says it over there. Oh, it, it kind of says it over here. Let me move it over here. There you go. It says it on the screen there, affinity for artifacts. So... A spell with affinity costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. So if we just have, even if we don't have Ugin in play, let's say we have two artifacts. Well, then Steel Overseer is free because all of our creatures and Planeswalkers have affinity. What's up, Greenleaf? Um, maybe I should just call this deck affinity, honestly, instead of Demir Forge. Maybe this should just be Demir Affinity. Let's do that. Demir Affinity. Because that's, that's what our deck is about. It's about Tezzeret and Ugin making these things cost basically zero. And so we get to... Um, Affinity Forge. All right. I like it. We're going to call it Demir Affinity Forge. That's pretty sweet. That's a sweet sounding name. Um, and so, yeah, we get to just play stuff for free. And uh, if we have five artifacts, then Golos is free. If we have six artifacts, Ugin is free. So we can actually have, we can actually cast Ugin for free off the top of our library with Mystic Forge whenever we have Tezzeret. Um, let's say, <laughs> let's say we do that, okay? Let's say, let's say we have six artifacts in play total, you know, with the help of Sihili and stuff, and we cast Ugin for free. Okay, so now, uh, now we still, let's say we still have six artifacts. So now we have six artifacts, um... The colorless spells cost two less, so we can, and then let's say the next card is Stone Stone Coil Serpent. We can then cast Stone Coil Serpent for eight for free, <laughs> you know, because it costs it costs one less uh, because of like the affinity, and then we also have Ugin making it cost two less, so it, it basically costs like negative eight, you know, like we could cast it, you know, just get it a free eight eight reach trample, and <laughs> you know, and so on. Okay, so yeah, that's that's what our deck's about. Um, this this could be pretty sweet. So yeah, the stone coral serpent would cost less. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So let's give this a try. Let's see. Let's see how we do. This could be pretty cool. Oh, I want I want the egg. Yeah, we need the egg sleeve for this, because these these are just like a bunch of eggs in here. Alright, let's get this deck going in action. Let's play a league with this deck. See if we can do it better than our last league. All right, I need to 
Send a message to Yud. Tell Yud that I'd like to change the deck name. Demir Affinity Forge. Yeah, so you play, like, the whole deck is free. Now, the thing about uh, Mystic Forge is Mystic Forge doesn't um, doesn't play lands off the top, but it does have, like, the ability to exile a card off the top. Hubba! <laughs> I'm all out of fun and standard, so here, so I'm here shopping for sweet brews again. <laughs> well, hopefully you can find a sweet brew that you like that's just the right price and that you're willing to buy. Okay. Um, we'll keep it. It's kind of what our deck's all about. Yeah, we mono blue now. Yeah, we're this is basically a mono blue deck. I'm just splashing black for sideboard cards and for the Tezzeret. And you know, we're we're hard you know, we're not really playing very much blue anyway, with you know, mostly Sahili being our blue spell. We'll kinda see when we want to play the serpent. We got a mirror match? Are you kidding me? We got a mirror match? Stone Coil is really good and limited to fill the curve. I can definitely see that. I can definitely see that. Prepare to marvel at my master. <laughs> Everybody playing Mystic Forge these days. Shake my head. <laughs> uh, looks like our opponent's probably playing dance with the manse. I'm sorry, but I must tend to my creations. Just certainly more lame. Um, I'm gonna play this again. I ideally I'll draw a land next turn and be able to play Golos. But even if not, we'll have double egg. Oh no! I know eighty-eight ways. That's rude. Pick one. But yeah, ho hopefully we just draw a land and get to play Golos. Like if we draw a land, we're good. We get to play Golos. We turn this Gil Globe into a Golos with Sahili, and we can kill Narset. So this is, this would be a big turn for a land. Stone Coil, like turning Gil Globe into Stone Coil Serpent doesn't work because it turns it into a zero zero. It doesn't have the counters. So we really need to just draw a land here. Land. Ugh. That hurts. And plus, with this thing being protection from multicolor, I don't even think I can target it anyway. Yeah, I can't even target it anyway. Keep an open mind. <laughs> Rule of MTG, if you need a land, you shall draw the highest CMC card instead. I know, right? We need one land. What do we do? We draw the highest CMC card possible instead. Come on, deck draw land. Okay. We did it.
So wait, Gil Globe the Golos, I guess the Golos will... Oh yeah, by the way, I just have like some random lands over here to go grab. Like we have a Field of the Dead randomly. One, two, three, four, five. I guess we'll have to sacrifice the other Golos, but that's fine. We have a new Golos in hand. Genius is as genius does. <laughs> you are a mighty warrior. I concede. <laughs> go low, or go home. <laughs> no, nothing at all. Yeah, we'll see if that was a good decision or not. Like getting rid of like we kind of need to get rid of Narset, but maybe that was just a bad decision because it it does. No you know, they let, they get to kill Sahili. Like, maybe I need Sahili to make blockers against Dance with the Mance. Though. Yeah, like, maybe that was just a really bad decision to do with the, the minus ability on Sahili. We're still learning, you know. We're still learning. So we have we have six six different lands right now. So if we draw a land that's different from any of these, we'll get to trigger Field of the Dead. This isn't your average zombie horde. Impressive, isn't it? Oh, thank you. Right, I just I forgot to do that over there. Where that is, way that's way over there. It's a, it's a long ways away from me for turning the, changing this carrot here. So there we go. Thanks for the reminder. So the serpent can kill Liliana even through a, a tick up because you know a tick up can make a two two. So I wanted to make sure that we're making a five five serpent. <laughs> Good help is easy to find in war. They just need one more land to be able to cast this dance and bring tons of four fours back into play. Oh, yeah, that's true. They have the Murderous Rider also, though. Ugh, I guess I kind of forgot about the Murderous Rider whenever I was thinking about that 5-5. Five, five. And it's over there uh, in exile for me to see, and I didn't really take it into consideration. Could have just cast the 7-7 seven, seven Serpent.
All this attack does is just let them draw cards. We got our we're gonna be, you know, scrying two here, looking for Ugin. I know, right? How is how is this this serpent being taken by Thought Erasure? <laughs> why why does that work? <laughs> wow. That's a great time wipe. That's a great time wipe. I mean, I don't want the Steel Overseer. Do I want Golos? Golos is probably better than a random card. Waste not, want not. I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab blast like my plan with Golos is to grab to grab blast zone, so I can like blast zone for two to destroy all all of these eggs that they get back with dance of the mans. Yeah. I've, I've I've started working on the five color nib. We're gonna have it ready for either tomorrow or Thursday. It'll be either tomorrow or Thursday. Fable Passage like isn't a bad one either, because like Fab like Fable Passage, if we find Mystic Forge, it's good to have the fetch lands in play. So like usually getting Fable Passage would be pretty good, but I think where we're at and like where they're at with Dance of the Mans, I think I need to get Blast Zone. Yeah, we could have a second Field of the Dead. I mean, it's Field of the Dead's looked good because I've I've drawn three Golos also, so it's made it look better. But I don't necessarily think that's gonna always be how the deck plays out. But I guess I guess we do we do have the ability to have a lot of Goloses in this deck maybe if if we start going crazy with our with Mystic Forge and stuff though too. Here we go. So yeah, maybe I should have a, a second Field of the Dead. I'm, I'm certainly glad we were playing the first Field of the Dead. Okay. Keeping Tezzeret for later might have been good. I mean, I got Tezzeret got thought erasured away. I didn't. I didn't. Keep, I don't think I cast Tezzeret, did I? I'm pretty sure I got thought erasured away. I'll protect you. I have. I have one mobilized district in here.
I guess maybe I need to not play this Serpent last turn, so I could have put a counter on the Blast Zone. I don't know. We'll see if we're dead. I mean, we're, we got blockers. Hopefully we're not dead. How many How many do they get to get back with Dance? One, two, three, four, five. They can have five creatures. Because this egg. This Narset just really messed me up. I, you know, looking back at it, that play of, you know, killing my Golos and putting my Narset down, or my Sahili down to three end up really, really backfiring against me. Like, that, that's the play that's going to, that I really regret with this game. Not, not making that play could have changed this game. <laughs> yeah. Yep, we crossed over to 10,000 YouTube subs today. We made it. That's definitely awesome. And so, yeah, thanks everybody on YouTube for all the support. Yeah, that, that's what the Blast Zone was for. All these 4-4s. Four it's a little late, though. Can't forget to attack once. Aha, uh -huh, thanks, Bobby. You were one of the first hundred YouTube subs. Thank you. I just don't I don't have anything that's gonna deal with this. I mean so I get oh well, okay, so I can chop block a bunch. I have millions of cards in hand. This is just this is just not gonna work. You know, like let's say I blast zone, like they're just gonna have another dance. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we got four Ashioks in the sideboard. Oh yeah. I like I like our our plan post sideboard with all these Ashioks, egos, and spyglass to stop Teferi. I should not have I should not have minus that Sahili. That really cost me. <clears throat> okay. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Who plays Spyglass? I do. I like our post board chances a lot better, but you know, like maybe if, if I just don't get rid of Sahili, you know, maybe we could have had a, a lot more one you know, extra one ones and we could have been fine maybe. Yeah, that's like the main thing. Yeah, Spyglass against Oko. Because uh, Oko can turn all my artifacts into 3 threes, and that's just, it's so hard to deal with. And trying to like play removal for Oko, and then they could play another Oko, and it's just a huge headache. So I just got a bunch of Spyglasses instead. Hey, Dark Claw. Yeah, I get to see some nice new brews. I'm excited about this Affinity Forge. We lost the first game, but, you know, made the, the one play that I think. Ended up completely backfiring against me.
Let's try to keep Sahili in play. <laughs> you missed July? I know. I do too. Miss July and Lyra. Reason I don't play Karn. Um, basically, I wanted all these other cards more than Karn. Kind of thing. Karn is like really easy to attack. Doesn't really protect itself. Um, I have to, you know, then then put a bunch of artifacts in the sideboard that I didn't necessarily want to do. I just kind of wanted all these other cards instead. Yeah, I'd rather have Karn Sion of Urza. They can make a, a big artifact creature. Well, I'm just going to play the Fable Passage, which means I don't get to play a Guild Glow, but I want to be able to play Saheeli next turn. Obviously, my opponent has Thought Erasure. Obviously. Ritual of Soot and Cry of the Carnarium. Cool. That's good for me. Disinformation campaign. Huh. All right, so what else do we got over here? So they have the one Liliana, one Narset, two Narset. So two Liliana, two Narset. Murderous Rider. Two Veto. Oh, two Do Doom Foretold, right. Three Doom Foretold. Kind of forgot about Doom Foretold. All right, we need to draw a land, get to play Golos, get an extra land for Ugin. If you show remorse, I'll show restraint. Yeah, so they have they have the one yeah for win cons they have one Liliana and the Doom Foretold that can make two twos I think that's it and Murderous Riders Murderous Riders can do some attacking. Uh, sorry, they're Mexican. There are just so many good. Yeah, I mean, 
they're like they put so many of the good cards at rare because yeah there are a lot of rares in the deck Ugh, they drew one of their two vetoes that's a killer really wanted that ugin so the one card that we didn't know about was one of the, they had two vetoes in their whole deck that was a perfect time to draw one of the two Yeah, Spyglass is on Teferi. I'm not going to activate Castle this turn. I'm going to, like, I'm not going to do it upkeep. Because I want, if I draw an expensive spell, I want to be able to play it. Unfortunately, my opponent's going to probably re-sideboard and take out all those terrible cards they had in their deck. That was a nice, easy win for us, though. Them having so many dead cards, like the Ritual of Sets and Cry of the Carnariums and stuff like that. But I'm not expecting that to happen again. Okay, cool. Sounds good, Candice. I'll keep that in then. No problem. Um, you want to build an IRL deck that does not have Teferi or Oko? Um... I don't know. I I kind of just yeah. You have the two two once upon a times right now. I don't know, like there's so many like there's so many different decks that you can you can play. Maybe check out you know check out the YouTube channel that I have because I I put up you know like four four different decks every day. So like there's you know dozens of things you can kind of choose from and you know just click on the video tab and just see you know like just click on the video tab and just see if there's anything that catches your eye. There's Lots and lots of different decks there. And to see what you like. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, that's true too. See, I mean, yeah, that's a good point with with having the the two guild globe. I could have activated the Golos there, also. Good call there. So yeah, ex exactly what to put together. I don't, I don't know. Kind of see see what uh, what calls to you. Mulligan. Keep. Yeah, there's not, there's not like a direct way to convert gems to wild cards, but yeah, it's it's the indirect way. It's really expensive, but yeah, you have to buy packs, you know, because if you buy six packs, that's one rare wild card that you you know you get because like the bonus. Um, so basically, one rare wild card costs six packs. And then you know after you know four times of that, you start getting Sorry, um, a mi one mythic there. But trying to get mythic wild cards, which is what I am kind of always short of, is 
quite difficult with that route. But yeah, M that's a good point. M MTG has never been cheap. Like, Arena is the cheapest MTG has ever been. You know, you actually get to play for free. It's it, uh, er, Like, Magic's always been a very expensive hobby. This might be a bad idea. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to play Mystic Forge. It just gives my opponent a really good card to bounce with Teferi. Because, you know, you still have to spend mana to cast up. We don't have the mana to cast up. So I should probably just cast Golden Egg. Looks like the opponent may have... Um, Dovin's Veto. Kind of looked like they were keeping up Dovin's Veto there. Gets to draw so many cards. So I don't really want to play Ashiok right here. It's no land? Wow. They got to go discard. We're going to play Golos. Nice. Yeah, this is a good song. Actually, I'll save the Fabled Passage because of Mystic Forge. Hey, Pete. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that, Pete. Come on, grab Mobilize District here. Our ninth sub of the day already. Maybe I should just grab Field of the Dead. Uh, thanks, Pete. Yeah, I hey, I really appreciate that that Twitch Prime sub there. No, no, they don't have any Agent of Treachery unless unless they suddenly have it from their sideboard. We got to see their deck last game. They had like one Liliana, um, and then of course Dance with the Mance. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Undo. Resolve. Sacrifice. I'll just sack this egg. Ugin's kind of too good. Penumbra! Staying on that 16-month streak. Ugin's kind of too good not to just resolve when we can resolve it. Even if I don't get to do anything else. I mean, I, could, I can play Mystic Forge and Ashiok. Ugin's just too good, though. They don't have double black for Murderous Rider anyway right now. But yeah, I don't. I need one more mana to be able to play Mystic Forge. Alright, 10th sub of the day. And that's a sub goal towards a 12 hour stream. Let's go mark that down. So where are we at now? So that's sub goal number 10. So we're halfway to our next 12 hour stream. I do a 12 hour stream every 20 sub goals. Of course, Grim Intent, go ahead. I never I never mind y'all posting links to deck lists and stuff like that. Always can. Let's slow this down. 
Don't worry, I got this. Okay. Let's start with Mystic Forge. Oh gosh, I want to draw. I want to draw that Tezzeret. And Mitchin! And PVD. Yeah, I think I think Abzan has a lot of good tools to be competitive. Absolutely. I think there are a lot of good Abzan tools. For sure. Uh, I want to draw that. We will be This is hardly my defeat. We're just gonna do this. We're gonna play this. I'll play another Mystic Forge here. We are gonna go crazy this next turn. If my hopefully my opponent doesn't concede. We're we're about to do it this next turn. <laughs> Set the sails, everyone. Rough winds coming up. Here we go. And lemon on rye. Oh, I'm behind on my sub count. That's number 14? Wow. Okay, well. The focus and it's, a, it's annoying. Meditate and prepare. No, not a negate. No, don't negate my Tesseret. Tap out. Tap out. Tap out. Tap out. Because Tezzeret's going to make, like, all these other things be, like, basically free. So there's your Orzov adventures. Pretty close to, like, the mono black knights that we're about to play. No, my opponent conceded. We didn't get to do the, the stuff. I know. We didn't get to s snake laser beam. Whoops. We didn't get two wins. We got one win. All right. What to know? <laughs> Man the guns. All hands on deck. <laughs> uh, Y'all make streaming so much fun. Um. Yes. Alcator okay, did, yeah. You gifted a sub to PVD. So, yep, it worked. Thank you so much. Let's keep. Draw some lands. My thoughts about Shimmer Dragon. Um, I think Shimmer Dragon is, is a good card. I think it's a cool, cool card, but it also... Like, the thing that I don't like about Shimmer Dragon, especially with, with this specific deck, is that it costs 6 mana, and I already have Tezzeret and Ugin at 6 mana, and I like Tezzeret and Ugin both better. And so it's kind of hard to play Shimmer Dragon when I have, like, because, you know, it's you have a, a limit of 6 drops that you really want to put in a deck. Okay, awesome, Project Vanner. Glad, glad to hear that Teamer Walker's doing very good there. Uh, I don't know what our worst matchup is for our affinity deck here, to be honest. I don't know. We, we've only played one match. We just played the Esper deck, and that one felt like a pretty decent matchup for us. So I was debating there whether to play the Fable Passage to try to play Sahili on three or to get Steel Overseer in play. And I'm going to go with Steel Overseer in play. I am planning on just playing a 2-2 Serpent next turn. If we don't draw land, you know, play this, play 2-2 Serpent, put counters on both of our cards. Uh, yeah, I suppose if my opponent played a Karn, I would be sad. Um, Oko, of course, is really tough. So I have a bunch of spy glasses in the sideboard to try to Protect against Oko. Mm -hmm. 
Simic Flash, huh? This has got to be a pretty rough matchup for us also. Because we were playing a bunch of expensive spells. Do we have cyborg cards for Flash? No, not really. Subisak, can you make a black-white control deck with Bolas, Citadel, or Ugin? Sure can. Sure can. Thanks, Subisak. Uh, do you have a, a time, a day, you know, any day time slot that you want? Let me write it down. Black-white control. Um, I'm not sure, like, which one I'm supposed to play first, Emery or Sahili. Okay, anytime? Okay. Cool, cool. Yep, I will work on that. Okay, resolved. That's pretty nice. Could be in a gate over here. So I kind of get to just keep on, re as long as Emery stays on the battlefield, which Emery probably will, I get to kind of keep on recasting. These artifacts. Hmm. I mean, I need to draw more lands, so I could go Gil Globe to draw more lands, but... Try casting the Stone Cold Serpent. Yeah, like they, like we got a pretty good engine here going on. They, they kind of have to have some Nightpack Ambushers. I, I hope they do not have Nightpack Ambusher, of course. Lurker of the Lock. If they don't have if they don't have like wolves and stuff, like we're gonna be good. As long as they don't have ambushers. They can't sit sit here and out grind this. Yeah, so Sailor Sailor can make Preserver a five five. Um, I don't mind. So I don't mind trading Serpent. For a 5 5 preserver, because preserver can get a lot bigger, of course. So I'm, I'm attacking here, I'm pressuring, because we do have to be worried about ambusher. So, kind of feels like they have ambusher. I hope not. I sure hope not. No. Yep, that's 
That's the thing we didn't want to see. Yeah, thanks, Grim Intent. Yeah, I saw that. Um, oh, this. Oh, this is a different one. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I like. Definitely like that kind of deck. Yeah, I like that Orzhov deck. Yeah, this is this is a problem. That was the the one card in their deck that could go bigger than us. Arcanist Owl. Just it's not as strong as the other cards that we have at the top end. Like nothing against Arcanist Owl. It's just you know you we you really only want to play sixty cards. So blast zone to try to destroy Nightpack Ambusher. Yeah, like these have CMC of zero on the battlefield. Get in these get in the zone. Possibly they just don't have Possibly they just don't have counters over there. I don't. I didn't have like a great atta attack there. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a great attack. Do I need to kill Wildborn Preserver? Instead of Ambusher. Yeah, taking out Preserver takes out Overseer. They have their own Blast Zone. Yeah, Serpent has Trample, but... Well, that's a bad attack. I should I should double block there. That's, that's just an easy double... I should be double blocking, because now they may just bounce Serpent when they realize that they're going to kill this. I, I really should have double blocked. Darn it, I should have double blocked. Yeah, I really need to double block that. Dang it.
Yep, Emmy can still cast that again. We kind of just we just need our six mana walkers to resolve. That's what we need. So this is a 10-10 right now. With Brazen Borrower, it can be 13. Uh, is Boot around today? I'm not sure. I haven't seen Boot yet in the chat. Make this thing 14. So I'm still trading trading one for one. I think that's a good trade for me. And now they're tapped out. Got there, affinity, affinity. Traded their 14-14, got to replay our Steel Overseer. <laughs> oh, the synergy. We got to affinitize. Okay, so I, I don't, I don't really have anything in my sideboard for this matchup, to be honest. I really don't. Um, I don't, I don't think I really want any of these cards. I could play Legion's End. Is kind of about it. Yeah, like Legion Sends like really about it. Could Unmoored Ego Night Pack Ambusher. Makes their deck a lot easier to beat with no ambusher, that's for sure. Like that's certainly the scariest card. I think I just I'm just gonna keep it the same though. Let's let's just go. Yeah, Legion's End is... Legion's End can be fine. Can be good. But... I want to just try to do my... my You know, play the A game. Yeah, Pedro, I think... You're on the right track there, but I think that Ashiok is, is more impactful than Ego against Field of the Dead decks. So you say you have four Ego, I would recommend having a good number of Ashioks to go with Egos. Use both? Okay, good. If, if you have four of a card, I would play four Ashiok and then like two Ego. Or, you know, like obviously, the, the you know, if you want to play four of each, you can. And then that's even the best, but... Mm. Am I supposed to wait on Serpent? I guess I, I don't have like the, the ability to just keep growing it, so if I play it as a 2-2, two -two, it's just going to be a 2-2. Two -two. Hey, Yud's here. What's up, Yud?
You have to join it in team chat. Well, that's certainly the... Uh, <clears throat> the two drop that I want Legion's End the most for. Like, that's... Preserver is the card that... Like, the reason to play Legion's End. Hmm... Oh yeah, the fam yeah the Ayara uh, Citadel that was crazy, those floods there. That we had her with that deck, that was crazy. All right, so I did spend this turn just still setting up, which that was my worst case scenario is them having Ambusher. All right, so it looks like they got this game on the play here. Yeah, Emery is definitely very good against Flash, but the Nightpack Ambushers are a problem. All right, well, my opponent's hand was loaded. GG. We'll see if we can win on the play for game three. Yeah, so I could have gone 2 2 Snake and Overseer. I guess 4-4 four, four is probably where we want to go to try to slow them down a little bit. If we can. If they just have another creature, they still get to like attack with Wildborn Preserver with. Um, but yeah, like these, these are like the two cards. The two cards that I'm scared of are Preserver and Ambusher. Like these are the two cards that are gonna beat me. And so Preserver on two, Ambusher on four. On the play, that's Definitely how my opponent could beat me. So they have another ambusher. What? What? What are you doing? Just just bounce it before blockers. So, I mean, this does stop, you know, like, one of the cards I'm really scared about with the Preserver. Yeah. 
I'm gonna take out two lanterns for two legions end. Yeah, honestly, I probably could see it there too early. Like maybe, maybe I could have. Um, who who knows? Yeah, I get to play Tezzeret, and then I can play some creatures. Yeah, maybe I should have just kept playing there. Correct. Spyglass doesn't do anything against Preserver. It's a triggered ability, not an activated ability. Correct. I mean, honestly, um, where do you go for... Like, I've heard... I've heard worse plans than... than if I just cyborg in a Mordigo for the night pack ambusher. <laughs> yeah. This is a good we're playing eggs and standard here. I'm shuffling first right here because I don't really want to draw land. That's a great card. I don't know if I'll be able to resolve that. That's a card that I would love to play. I, w I wish I had that this past turn. I could have played that before they started having everything available. Wanda Vertebrae. Basically, I think it's kind of unnecessary. I I don't like playing... I've never really liked playing cards that are only good whenever you have, like, your powerful card in play. It's like, once, yeah, once you have Mystic Forge in play, Wanda Vertebrae would make Mystic Forge better. But just think of all the games that you don't have Mystic Forge in play, and like, what is what is Wanda Vertebrae doing for you? It's, it's like not doing anything at all. They have exactly four lands. Must be nice. Yep, that's that is the art of playing flash. Draw exactly two green sources, two blue sources, and never another land. And just and have your opponent not play a threat the first two couple of turns either. So yeah, this is a tough matchup for us. As we saw here. Tough matchup for us. Our deck's filled with expensive cards.
SB lock. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there. I appreciate that. So obviously if they have any creature to pump the Wildborn Preserver, I'm dead. They just had really, really good hands games 2 and 3. You know, gotta just give it up to them. They had very good hands there. Our, <clears throat> our deck's not really gonna beat... They're very good hands. That's what they had games two and three. Okay. Oh, come on, deck. Can we just get two lands? I mean, I prefer more. Get rid of these. Yeah. Because we're going to need, you know, we're going to need mana to cast spells. So I want to keep Chromatic Lantern. It's unfortunate that we're on a five card hand. Would have been nice to try to, nice to be able to play this. I'm known for my excellent timing. Match up on a normal hand. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. My creations All right, we'll be able to shuffle that Ugin back towards the top. I've got time. But it looks like another great hand for our opponent. You know, Grow Spiral on two, Teferi on three, Golos on four. Looks like a another great curve. Try this. <clears throat> it's unfortunate. Learn from this. 
just unfortunate that my opponent's playing Deputy of Detention. That's not a card that you see very often, but that Deputy of Detention is just an amazing card against me. Like, like yeah, Deputy of Detention is just an amazing card against me. I wish my opponent wasn't playing it. In their deck. I have a plan. It's like my plan is, you know, I want to Spyglass to Fairy, but if I'm having Deputy, you know, like if, if we if we had the Sahili still out where we got to make more tokens, we'd have a lot better shot here. You know, if we would have had, you know, if we would have just had two extra tokens here with Steel Overseer. You've seen Deputy quite often recently. I have. I have not. You know, I've played against. You know, five, ten field decks a day, and it's. You know, it's probably like one maybe that has Deputy. But maybe maybe it's a new thing because mirrors are just becoming so impactful and so big that. Like, if they didn't take Sahili, we would have had five more tokens out here. <clears throat> and so, you know, like, we would have had enough blockers. Kind of like, you know, no another five blockers would have been huge. But, oh well. Yeah, killing, killing Deputy is really annoying. I mean, I guess I should play Ritual instead of Legion's End. I don't want to kill my own creatures. I could play Ritual of Sits instead. Ugh. Why did that have Deputy? Hmm. Yep, I just have Ugin to kill it. So yeah, that's it's rough. <laughs> Alright, we got we got one ritual set in there to kill it also. Emery's been doing pretty good for us. We've had to take out Emery a couple of times, just, you know, for space. Um, but it looked, looked nice against the Flash deck, getting, you know, extra spells to cast all the time. Fortunately, we're not hitting land drops here. So 
I didn't get to play Sahili on three, which obviously is what I really wanted to do. <clears throat> Please don't have Growth Spiral or anything great on turn four. Okay, good. All right, I meant I meant Securitas route, but still. Behold, new wonders. Want to keep on drawing lands. Let's get to six, please. We need to get to six. We need to get to six. Good. So I should play Tezzeret first. I mean, I can play both Tezzeret and Ugin next turn. They don't have red mana for Kenrith. Which is good. I mean, they have they have Deputy. But I, I have Ritual set for Deputy, so like we're, we're kind of good there. If we draw land, I can play Tezzeret and Ugin and Guild Globe. Like, if we draw land, our, our, we get to, you know, just really affinity this thing up. Yeah. All right, y'all ready to see some affinity? Affinity time. Play Tezzeret. Ugin is free. Play Ugin. Now Guild Globe is free. Play this. Hmm. That one's not free. Alright, we'll take you up. Ah, Mystic Forge. I need that. Alright, claw time. Bzz, bzz. That is awesome. <laughs> this means nothing. All right, so they took Tezzeret. Even though I had, they left me Ugin to kill the deputy. Now I am not. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Hmm. I need this 2-2 to die. Only time will tell. Planar cleansing? What kind of crap is that? All right, yeah, I'm going to have to ego planar cleansing. So do I want to name Golos or Kenrith? Probably Kenrith. They have two planar cleansings. Agent of Treachery. They also have an they have two Ashioks. Bzz, bzz. <laughs> this is just the beginning. 
So I guess I would have had lethal if I would have just not attacked the Tezzeret and just did all my stuff first and ticked up Tezzeret and then attacked with these creatures. We could have just killed them. But we got to see we got to see their deck with the Elmord Ego and everything. Alright, well planar cleansing's a huge problem. But that was awesome. That was awesome. We got to see play Tezzeret and Ugin. Same turn. Who needs fires of invention? Maybe is that what's burning in the Mystic Forge? Is the fires of invention? Whoa. Are we going deep here? Whoa. Fires of Invention are actually inside the Mystic Forge. <laughs> Deep floor. Yeah, I could have activated the creature land to attack as well. Alright, well, I'm gonna have to. Gonna have to worry about this planar cleansing. Won't have this Ashiok out for too much longer. Doesn't look like. But we got rid of one Golos and the Kenrith. That was good. Yay, they don't have another white source. Basically, how much, like, do I want to play this Mystic Forge also, where if they draw a white source, I'm in a lot of trouble? How many white lands did we get rid of? Tranquil Cove. Temple Garden. We got rid of two. Oh, no. Ugh. <gasps> we did it. We did it. <laughs> Touchdown. 
Okay. So they have... They still have a lot of good cards. A whole bunch of Knight of Autumns, Agent of Treachery. Like, all their cards are pretty good here. It's like, they're probably going to draw other good stuff with those draws. I want to keep this Fable Passage for the Mystic Forge. I definitely want to keep that on top. Um, yeah, might as well kill this and, and it's like a Knight of Autumn, blow up Spyglass. Yeah, sure. It's four life. It's only a matter of time. Four damage. <laughs> they have two of all their lands. Two fountain, two forest, two island. Oh, no. Now they they finally made it zombie. 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 Mm. Could just cast the Golos off the top for free. No, let's get Ugin and play. And why? Heed my advice. It's probably good to keep the. I'll just have the Legion's End over here. It's probably good to have a Legion's End available, you know, like tucked Heed away. Yeah, so I could have attacked, uh, you know, I would have sacrificed a 1-1 one -one to do 4 damage. Yes, I want that other Ugin, just in case. Oh, that card's free. Let's play it. Free stuff's pretty good. Alright, 3 mana Golos. And grab just another Fable Passage to have to reshuffle. Secrets yeah, that card's fine. Before you. Mm. Interplanar Beacon. Don't really need another one of these, but all right. I want to keep that land in there.
I think the ribbon on the permanents mean they have they have uh, abilities. I should probably be attacking there again. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of attacking. I like just continually playing stuff. Hooray, we won! All we had to do was get rid of those planar cleansings. Demir Affinity Forge. We were going to have another, like, you know, like our next turn, like basically each turn just really compounds. Because with three, you know, we had three Mystic Forges in play. So, like, we got three cards, you know, so we got to get rid of three lands. Um, also, from the top, anytime we saw those, we had another shuffle effect. Like, we were just going to be playing so many cards again the next turn. Okay, okay. So we're going to have, like, Overseer on two, Overseer on three. And then we'll just kind of Overseer what happens. After that. <laughs> do, do, do. Rugged Highlands. Come on. Ugh. I would really like to draw land here. I don't want to like miss, a, you know, I don't want to miss my third land drop, but I also want to play Overseer the next turn. So it's we're in a kind of a weird spot here where if I just like play the Guild Globes, I have a better chance of hitting land drops. But yeah, we we need to get our creatures in play. Unfortunate. We missed the land drop. It's unfortunate. Please do not kill my Overseer this turn. Just grow the Chamber Guardian. Just don't kill an Overseer. Because these things are going to be very large, very fast. No. Ugh. <laughs> so basically the worst possibles are just happening. Us missing land drop them killing Overseer. But, alright, now we hit the land drop, though, so that was, like, best possible. Emery can recast Overseer. What's up, Blue Fire? No, I'm not fully opposed to playing a Field of the Dead deck. Our, our deck has one Field of the Dead in it. This deck that we're, I'm currently playing. But also, it's just... I've never been about playing, like, the, the best, most popular deck. There's tons of other streamers you can see play the, the best, most popular deck. I like building different decks and giving people new ideas and everything. And looking for different angles to attack. The metagame. Whew. We're about to go crazy here. Rule Henge. Opponent's also going crazy. We got a crazy game. No blocks. Ow. What was that for? Ugh. Where's these lands at? I mean, I, I just got to play this to look for land. I want to play the Ser... I would have preferred to play the Serpent in the, in the graveyard. We just got to look for lands, though. <laughs> a 
<laughs> what the hell just happening? This looks like the this just looks like the gruel hench deck that we played the other day. Had a lot of success with it. I liked it quite a bit. I mean if if we draw if we draw two lands, if we get to play Tezzeret, we'll win. It's just can we draw two lands? That's the question. We need to draw land, land. Next two draw steps. They still have four mana over there. They got the Incubation Druid. They can add three. You know, we missed... We were on the... Play, right like we missed two land drops already so it's gonna cost us here Emery didn't help milling over three lands you want to attack go ahead attack do it yeah great attack great attack attack some more Okay, that's a land. No! What was that? I'm trying to just cast this thing. Gross. Well, that was rough. Just tap to steal overs here for no reason. Oh well, I'm, my opponent threw away their Gruel Spellbreaker, so I guess that makes up for it. Oh, I am gonna love tearing this place to the ground. Yeah, I was just trying to play my spell. Yeah, who knows? That that could kill me. That was not a great misclick. <laughs> I still like our chances if we draw land and get to slam Tezzeret Ugin. Still like our chances. If we survive this, obviously. Obviously, we could just die this turn. I don't know. I haven't done no math yet. <laughs> Stomping time. <laughs> you play the Terminator 2 theme. For, the, for this Rise of the Machines. <laughs> we are playing the Flow Bots right now. Alright, so go to Blockers. Pro Multicolor on that thing. Biggest thing there. Uh, we'll take out this... 4-4, four, four. block this, go to 1, keep all of our stuff alive, go to 1. What a terrible, 
What a terrible tap that Steel Overseer was. Is it actually better to block these things and let Grum Goalie stay out here because they could have another Grum Goalie? It may be. Did my opponent just leave themselves dead to like all this power on the battlefield? Ugh. We did not draw the land. Like, how much do I got here? 10, 16, 17, 24. Yeah, they're they're pretty dead. Just double checking. That's a lot. Yay. All right, they got a bunch of big creatures. So I could uh, set some rituals. We'll do that. Try to forget. I don't even know if it's good to set any rituals. Two ritual sets, one lantern. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, Y'all are just on fire today in the chat. I love it. But it's like, cannot compute, error, error. <laughs> we got all these robots over here in our deck. Is there any card that we can replace for some budget version of this deck? Yeah, you could replace the easiest thing to replace that, you know, makes the deck worse, but, you know, you still can can play it just fine is, is replacing the Stone Coil Serpent. That's a rare. Just replace that with another. You can replace that with, like, another artifact creature or, you know, something else. Um, like, that, that card could be replaced. Yeah, probably just another, like, a cheaper artifact creature. Preferably... Cost two or less. Ugin's Conjurant. Yeah, you could just do that. Yeah, just you could just play Ugin's Conjurant. Yeah, and that thing's an uncommon. Yeah, just just do that. Yeah, that's there you go. It's worse, but you can do that. No, why do they have to have turn three questing beast? Why is why is that a thing? I wanted to play my Sahili. Why do we just let people go turn three questing beast on the play? I'm just over here laying eggs. And my opponent's going beast mode. How's that fair? Alright, so we found a serpent. I just want to play double overseer. I have to take another hit for four. It sets me up so much better, though. Honestly, <laughs> Stone Cold Serpent's the only card that I have four of. No. Yeah, I think this is my Gruel Flame deck. Sweet. They just kept all their cards. Just looked at all their cards and were like, nah, these are all good. 
I guess the Healy's pretty great against Cavalier. Oh no! See, Healy doesn't trigger with Stone Coral Serpent. Ugh. I was planning on playing just going Sahili Serpent. Hmm. It's a little awkward. It's a little awkward. Not too awkward, though. I'll figure it out. We'll be good. We still got this. I know how to stop you. We'll figure it out. We don't have trample. Yeah, I kind of expect another one of those. Tezzy on top. Should I got Golas from the gra grave this last turn? Uh, probably. I kind of forgot about Golas, to be honest. Yeah, instead of playing the Mystic Forge, just play the Golos. Yeah, I could have I could have played this better. Definitely. Could have put ourselves in a better position to win this. But we're not we're not out of it. We got a shot. Wow, I love that my opponent didn't attack. We got an even better shot. Okay. So we're definitely playing this thing. We'll get Golos. Shuffle this up. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I have six different. So we'll go grab Field of the Dead. Get another 2-2. Two, two. Hmm. All right, we're going to pay one life and see if we get lucky here. Hit a creature. Darn. Or Planeswalker. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. 
if I let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so I have eight. If I bolt them, it's either that or get back overseer, or I guess I could technically get back Golos and reshuffle again. Do I have enough defense? If I do Golos, I think so. Maybe I don't have enough. Defense, that is. I like to think fast. I mean, it's kind of risky. I could have, you know, drained them for eight. I could have just gone up to 16 here. It's a little risky. It's a 2-2 two -two and a shuffle. Close your eyes. Breathe. Yeah, we got we got a 2-2. Two -two. We got to land out of the deck, you know, especially a Fable Passage. And we also got to shuffle and, and, you know, maybe hit more stuff. We're fit enough to survive. Crap. Why does Questing Beast have to have Trample? Questing Beast with Trample is... Just like game, basically. Okay. I can't even block that thing. So you, you have to block this thing. All right. So I have to put up. I have to put up 10 toughness in front of this thing and 8 toughness in front of this thing. All right, looks like maybe you're not blocking this. That's 7, 9, 7. I'm going to die by one. Looks like I'm going to die by one. Exactly one. Exactly one. This this one damage of eight trampling over seven. It does Serp, serpent on like the multicolor. It just doesn't matter. They still get to trample. I mean, I don't know. Maybe my opponent messes up. Ran out of time. Yeah, it just it just happens. I, I mean I did I so as you see here it said negative seven but I didn't I didn't block with this thing but yeah I was I was gonna die by one. Yes, trample works over protection. Trample works over protection. Dun, 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 dun. All right. <laughs> the overseer just sits out. Yeah, see, you only have to do that. Yeah, tough loss. I I made I made wrong decisions. I made wrong decisions. I got too fancy with the Ugin and just some other stuff earlier. I got too fancy. I I should have won that game. Okay. Let's see what we get here, though. I'm going to just 
get this out of here because we're going to probably want this extra land. No, I I mean, I, I ran out of time, and so I didn't get to tap the Overseer there. But no, even with, with counting tapping the Overseer, the best block I could make had me taking exactly lethal. Like the best block I could make had me taking exactly lethal. So... I need I need one more point to stay alive. One more point of toughness or something to stay alive. That hurts. So my plan here was just to, to chump lock with Serpent and then recast Serpent with Emery. Emery was going to do a lot of work for me. Yes, I was counting the Overseer buff. Yes, I was counting the Overseer buff. I did all the math. Because of the trample with the Death Touch, we because of like the three trample creatures, I I couldn't cover I couldn't block everything and cover enough from the three trample creatures. That was perfect. I mean, well, not perfect. I had a, you know, shock and everything. So not... Not necessarily perfect. Perfect. I don't have very many artifacts right now, so I don't get to play Tezzer at Dandugan. I can only play one of the two this next turn. So, looks like I'm dead. Alright, so... I mean, I, I just threw away that, that game. That game, too. I, I just tried to do a, a bunch of cute plays. I thought I could still stay alive, but I didn't quite stay alive. So like that that was just my fault, the game two. But I should have. Should have been able to stay alive. Well, I guess we're not dead. Stone Coral Serpent's kind of perfect. Be about moats in a vast multiverse. Obviously, they can have a lot of things that kill us, but we're not just... The game's not over. <clears throat> Game's not over yet. Okay, game's not over. 
We have a chance. So I can play this for four for free. I can play this for free now. Dismal backwater to gain a life. Play this for free. Play this for free. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see. Let's shuffle this. It's affinity time. It's affinity time. Down to three. Ah. Come on, where's spells? We need artifacts. Truth lies beyond oh, there's so many non-artifacts in a row. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So seven. Oh, I, I could have played that for... Oh, no, I could have played that for nine. Yeah, I could have played that for nine because I forgot about the two extra for Ugin. Oh, well. Um, yep, let's, let's actually bolt this time. I'm going to be safer. We're going to bolt... I could have had that serpent for nine. We hit a pretty big land pocket there. Yeah, that was that was an insane turn that we just had. Dude, this deck's fun to play. This deck's fun to play. Well, that's all right. We could, yeah, we could survive Beast Cavalier. None of these things have trample. Like my opponent's just dead. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty easy to make mistakes. I need to, you know, play the deck more to, to really master it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep playing this deck. This deck's a lot of fun to play. Oh, don't concede, opponent. Let me have another turn. Don't concede. Don't concede. No. Yeah, we survived that. It looked like we were dead for sure. I thought we were dead for sure. All right, and for surviving, we got a pack and a mastery orb. Well, let's let's crack these open. Hey, up and Adam. Hey, GG's there. Yeah, yeah. We both had we both had the big misplays. Yeah, you had the 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 attack. That you didn't need to attack with and then I had then like the next turn I accidentally tapped I was trying to cast my spell and I accidentally tapped the steel overseer and then that was rough and then uh yeah game game two I played so loose game two I I had such better lines than what I had than what I took but it was a fun match though it was a very fun match very fun match GG's. All right, looks like we got Rankle for our reward. Yeah, you yeah you were playing the Gruel deck. Yeah, how how did you like that the Gruel deck there? Yeah, that's what it, that's what I thought. You were playing. 
you're playing the Gruel Henge deck that we had on stream a little while ago. I like that one. It's real, real powerful. Yeah, good, good call. Ch taking out, taking out the ley lines, like, putting in cinder, cinder vines instead. Good call there. <laughs> Thanks, Bear Army. You completely forgot about of uh, Tezzeret. Tezzeret's awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, glad it's working out for you. Yeah, I liked that Gruel, Gruel Henge. We're playing a similar deck. We're going Naya Henge later on. It's kind of similar. It's mostly all Gruel cards with a Great Henge. Oh, sorry, Storm. I just saw your message saying that I should have chat vote on which card style to grab. Uh, I'm just just grabbing the card styles that we will use. Yeah, I know. I'm so glad we get another match of the deck, too. <laughs> Storm, I actually opened a fourth copy of Mystic Chaff. Or, sorry, Mystic Forge earlier today. And was like, eh, more chaff. <laughs> How wrong you were. Dun, dun. Mystic chaff. <laughs> What's the splash making Naya color worth it? Uh, well, the donation was to put, like, I had a donation to just build a Naya deck, a Naya Great Henge deck. And so that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm building a Naya Great Henge deck. Um, as far as whether or not the, the splash is actually worth it, I don't know. So going to go with the golden egg, egg here and have serpent as a 3-3 three, three instead of just a 2-2. Two, two. I mean, I guess that it's pro multicolor, so it, it doesn't really matter if it's bigger or not than the goblin. What would, in your opinion, be the most competitive way to play the Great Henge? Um, honestly, that, that Gruul deck that we just played against was the Great Henge deck that I've had the most success with. Uh, you know, I had more success with that compared to, like, Mono Green and Green Black. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to try out this Naya deck and just see how it goes. That's true. Yep, now we're... Yep, now the, the Serpent is safe against Shock and... Uh, Bone Crusher Giant, the Stomp, and the, you know, we don't have to worry about Domri's Ambush. That's multicolor. Is my opponent playing the Give Your Creature plus four, plus two card? Okay, so they're going to shock and kill Pell Collector. I'm fine with that. We got the backup. It's just Pell Collector can just grow and be a very... Big pain. So uh, I don't mind taking the two for one. Taking the opponent's turn and everything. <laughs> yeah, basically, Domri's ambush, you just can't target it. Yeah, whenever a trample creature attacks a thing with protection, all you have to do is just assign enough damage to you know, assign a lethal damage kind of thing of like where if it's a 4-4, four, four, all you have to do is assign the 4 and you can still trample over. So the protection, you don't have to, the protection doesn't stop trample, basically. You have to just assign enough that it would represent lethal damage normally. So I'm going to take out two lanterns for two sets. Play a mono green control. I mean, I guess that would be like, you know, mono green Tron. I guess that would be like the closest for like mono green control. Yeah. This isn't, um, this isn't my list, but this is a viewer in chat was talking about mono green Tron the other day and I, I just saved the deck list. 
to be able to look at later. I hadn't really looked at it, but there's a, a mono green Tron list to just put in chat. That's kind of like mono green control. Do you think Simic Henge with Hydroid Crisis at top end is better than or equal to Gruel? I could see that. Um, Simic kind of has all the great cards. So, yeah, I mean, Cavalier Thorns works perfectly with the Great Henge. You know, Risen Reef, all that kind of stuff. No, I didn't think I really needed Legion's End. Thanks, up and Adam. GG's. It doesn't look like a great attack. Probably should have just attacked with the Bell Collector too. Chill. Just don't really need to ritual of set. Uh Cinecore with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Cinecore. I appreciate that. Showing the support there, our 17th sub of the day. Awesome day today, thanks everybody. All right. We are four and one going on to the final boss. It looked bad for us for a little bit. Stone Coral Serpent counts as zero CMC on the battlefield. You have the X's count, basically the X's count as zero. All right, final boss. We're either going to lose and then we only get this many gold, which is 1,700, or we win and we get all of this gold, which is 2,100. Still never never really understood the diagrams here. Good. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. How is this deck winning a lot? This deck's actually pretty, pretty good. We get to do some crazy stuff with this deck. Final boss. I mean, playing, playing cards for free is good. And we get to do that a lot. Not a lot, but sometimes. Demir Affinity Forge. Down, down. All right, let's see. We're going to go ahead and... Put, hmm. I guess I need to put Sahili or Forge back. I guess it's Forge. 
I guess I, I could just put the Gil Glow back. We'll do that. Let's try to just draw lands without that. Looks like it's a gruel day today. You can say this has been a a grueling league for us to fight through. Don't kill steel overs here, what are you doing? So I could go Lantern and then make a bigger Stone Coil Serpent that would be able to survive Bone Crusher Giant. But that's just taking some damage there that we don't really need to. I don't even get to play Sahili here in Watery Grave. Like, I want to play Sahili Watery Grave. I guess I'll go Lantern Watery Grave. Taking four from the Giant. Please attack with both. Attack with Spellbreaker. Go ahead. Darn. Um, I don't know how I deal with that now. Draw Ugin. Why does Embercleave have to be a card? Why does Embercleave have to be a card? I was feeling pretty good about that game. Until Embercleave. I'm going to bring in all three sets this time instead of just two. Second phase boss fight. Yeah, the the trample with em Ember Cleave, that's a huge problem. Bone Crusher just killing you know, killing my Steel Overseer immediately. Hurt quite a bit. Uh, 
All right, looks like we got some tough mulliganing decisions here from our opponent. <laughs> yeah, now the boss knows all my moves. <laughs> Sephiroth. All right. Sephiroth is tough. I mean, that's a... Sephiroth has a like, huge sword. The Ember Cleave. <laughs> Lemon on Rye. Oh, that's, those are, that's a great use of emotes there. The one wing. <laughs> yeah, Sephiroth with a double strike. All right, so we're kind of relying on uh, Ritual of Satyr. Let's see if we get another black source with the Guild Globe. I guess Guild Globe can just filter our mana anyway, though, and be a black source. Okay, I, all right. I was just kidding. I don't. I don't want to draw black sources. I'm sorry, deck. I didn't. I didn't mean that. I, I want to draw spells. I'm sorry. I, I want to draw spells. <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> no, you ask for mana. You get mana now. <laughs> Sephiroth was the worst in Kingdom Hearts. Well, I mean, stop drawing lands. Sephiroth's supposed to be the bad guy. All right, hopefully that slows him down. No questing beast or nothing like that. Drawing watery graves really bad because it's not you know not even a separate land for Field of the Dead. You know, like we only have I only have one land right now that's different. All these lands doing. Actually, I'm not. I'm not going to upkeep it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, robber. You can take my island, but you can never take my Fable Passage. Come and destroy! Perfect. Um. 
I wish we had a Sahelian play. This is uh, so I could I can tick up and, and have the Tezzeret be a two two. I could also just kill this Domri. I don't want to do that. Oh, actually, no, I should tick up because of robber triggering. The fabric of the multiverse obeys me. All right, there we go. Yeah, you can take. <clears throat> you can take this land. <laughs> Mystic Forge plus Ugid. <laughs> it's so insane. All this stuff is free. What we just we just played twenty CMC. <laughs> yep. All right. Oh, let the blighters feel the ground. I mean, it feels bad that we get a, a creature killed, but we also got that creature for free along with a lot of other cards. Perfect. Not so perfect. We just gotta stay alive. We're down to seven. We'll, we'll be able to win this with Tezzeret this turn, I think. I think this game's over. I think. Well, wait, I can't... Oh, I guess I don't have the mana to cast Tezzeret and Sahili. So I don't actually get to cast a Healy. Okay, so this costs two less because of Ugin, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can do this for ten. Just, just get a free ten, ten. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Ooh, I want a free Golos. Oh, more Ugins? All right, this Ugin's gonna kill the Umbercleave. To bathe in ghost fire. Free Ugin. My presence alone will guide you. What? Where are you going, opponent? Where are you going? <laughs> Where are they going? All right, here we go. <laughs> a free Ugin inside. Oh man, it, this deck has been a whole lot of fun. This deck's been a ton of fun. <laughs> yeah, we only played more cards in one turn than the opponent played in their whole game. <laughs> All right, yeah, last 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 phase of the final boss. Here we go. <laughs> Join House Demir to receive your free Uga now. <laughs> My opponent's looking at the cards of their sideboard like, what just happened? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely need to, yeah, I've definitely found the free Ugin in the box of cereal.
This is going to be a, a good game here. I don't know. Imagine storing like that in paper. I know, like, you just like look at the top card, like, I'm going to play this too. Oh, I'm going to play this too. Do I drink tap water, filtered water, or bottled? I do filter water. You know, from just like from the fridge. Unfortunately, it looks like, you know, we have, we have like the four tap lands here. Which is kind of unfortunate. Serpents are good blockers. We're definitely not mulligating our hands. But it, it doesn't look like I can play like a, a 3 3. Ser like, you know, if I want to play a serpent on 2 for a 2 2, I don't get a serpent as a 3 3 also. But I kind of need a serpent on 2 for this robber of the ridge. Take a land. Thank you. The problem with Serpent on 3, though, is it does get stomped and shocked. Or, sorry, Serpent on 2 does get stomped and shocked. So I could just wait a turn and then go Serpent on 3, Serpent on 3. Ugin? What? My opponent got the free Ugin this time? Wow. My opponent got the free Ugin. I guess by going three, we actually get to do three, then four. By waiting. But they did not play a land. They have two shocks? Huh. That's pretty shocking. They had it, two of those. But no lands means no more fight from our opponent. Robber of the Rich can take cards, but does not take real estate. Even though you think if you were a Robber of the Rich, you'd want to be able to steal real estate. But it cannot, and therefore we have our five wins. We did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ugin, Ugin was actually a traitor. Ugin uh, went deep undercover there to kill the opponent. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry to hear about that, Radical Guru. But anyway, let's talk about our deck. This deck was awesome. Wow, this deck was a lot of fun to play. This deck was really cool. Yeah, I honestly just liked everything about the deck. Uh, I guess Chromatic Lantern was... I guess the worst card in the deck was definitely Chromatic Lantern. But Chromatic Lantern did give us something to sideboard out. And I only played 24 lands, so I was a little worried about getting to 6 mana with only 24 lands. But, you know, Lantern and then, Gol you know, like, these things got us some extra draws. Golos, you know, once you have five lands, you play Golos. Now you have six. Um, the one Field of the Dead was impressive. And, uh, and yeah, I like, just kind of liked all the cards that we had. Like, this just worked really well. So, no, no complaints here at all with this deck. This was just, this was a ton of fun to play. Um, Stone Coil Serpent was absolutely amazing. It was very impressive. Steel Overseer was good. Sahili was good. Tezzeret and Ugin were really cool to go along with the Mystic Forge. Yeah, everything just kind of worked worked perfectly here. Yeah, really overperformed. Um, like, two of my losses, at least two game losses, were simply me misplaying stuff and, you know, not, not taking the correct decisions and everything. Uh, two of the game losses. Uh, we did win both of those matches that I messed up in uh so they didn't it didn't affect a uh, match loss but um so yeah this this went really well i wouldn't really change like the only thing to the only thing to kind of change would maybe be the chromatic lanterns 
All the other cards should definitely be in here. Um, the Chromatic Lanterns are like the only maybe change. Playing Demir without Thought Erasure is a little weird, but or you know like you know kind of any removal. But that's okay. Chromatic play Witching Well instead. The problem with Witching Well is which like Witching Well costs blue mana, which is a problem. You know like so you don't get to cast it for free with your Ugin. But of course, Chromatic Lantern costs one mana. But I th I think I I mean I liked the Lantern. I liked how the Lantern can kind of can kind of get you to these. Like I I don't basically I don't want to take out Lantern, but I'm just saying if if you want to take like that's like the slot that like maybe there's something better but i liked it i liked it um let's go back to our normal playlist so yeah this deck was awesome mana geode i guess yeah mana geode could be a thing so like the reason why the reason why we go Lantern, though, so yeah, you get to scry one with that, which is cool. But the reason why I like Lantern is because it makes all of your lands five-color lands, so it lets you activate Golos. We never we never did that. Like, that never came up. But, you know, it, it can't allow you to do that. Um, so that's why I like the Lantern is because of Lantern with Golos. But, yeah. Uh, scuttle mutt. Y'all keep on saying scuttle mutt, and so it's so it's a three mana two two. It's an option. So again, I, I like how lantern turns on Golos, but with scuttle scuttle mutt being a creature, I kind of didn't really know this card existed to be honest. With, with how we saw the games play out, like, this could be better because a creature, you know, you get to, um, you get to put counters on it with Steel Overseer. And also Tezzeret, you know, you have affinity for, your creatures have affinity spells. So, like, playing creatures is, is nice with Tezzeret. It makes a Healy a little worse. That is true. It is good with Ugin. You can turn a color. You can turn like your opponent's Golos into having a color, so that your Ugin can kill it. I don't know if that'll ever come up, but maybe that would. That that probably comes up a whole lot less than activating Golos. I feel like act being able to activate Golos is just amazing. Oh wow, this does work really well with Serpent, doesn't it? You turn their creature into being a multicolor creature for Serpent. Okay, like that's pretty awesome. Okay, next time we'll we'll try it out. We'll try it out. We'll try it out. We'll try out some scuttle mutts. I don't think I ever said I would. I don't think I ever thought I'd ever say that. But yeah, we'll tr we'll try out some scuttle mutts next time instead of the lanterns there. And, you know, having, like, because having creatures is good for, you know, a lot of reasons. You know, obviously the Steel Overseer, as we talked about, the Tezzeret gives your creatures affinity for artifacts. And also, even with Emery, like, having another creature, you know, you get to block with Scuttlemutt, you know, have it die, have Emery bring it back. You know, so even having creatures there. <laughs> no, the, the eggs are, the eggs are awesome. No, I would I don't think, I wouldn't play a key instead of the eggs. The egg, the eggs are perfect. Um won't work with serpent not in addition but it says the color or colors of your choice so you know so you, you get to say colors so you can you can choose multiple colors right so it should work with serpent like you choose like your creature is now a black white creature it says colors so i assume that works that you can choose multiple no i, I don't think this, this deck needs to splash for a man's uh dance with the man's um, but anyway, yeah, this deck was awesome. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, make sure you, you hit the like and subscribe buttons over there, but then also let me know how, how you like this deck. Uh, if you're trying this deck at home, let me know how it's going with, for you. You know, I always like hearing the, the feedback there. Tell me how it's going with the deck and everything. Um, I'm, 
I'm definitely planning on playing this deck again here in the upcoming days because this was a lot of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we could do like one lantern, two scuttles for sure. I think the next time I play it, I just want to play the three scuttles though, just so I can kind of see how, how scuttle plays. And then, yeah, we can kind of we can kind of go from there and see how much, uh, see see how good it is, see if we want Lantern and so on. You know, we can kind of adjust. But, you know, I think, like, for the next time, I just want to play all Scuttles to, to give it more chance of drawing kind of thing. Yeah, Scuttle does not work very well with Sahili, but it does work, it works better with everything else, basically. <laughs> everything besides Sahili and, and the Golas Activation. Like, those are the two things. The Golas Activation and the Sahili. But, um, <clears throat> like, with Ugin makes your stuff cost two less, but you can't still you still can't play Chromatic Lantern for free. But Tezzeret can make Scuttle Mutt cost zero. And, you know, stuff costing zero is nice. Sahili doesn't seem that great. Are you What? Sahili is amazing in this. Like, you know, you get a bunch of 1-1s, one like, for your Steel Overseers. And, uh... Having a bunch of one ones is like what makes Tezzeret's plus ability work really well. No, see, Healy is just amazing in this. Yeah, it's it's definitely part of our combo for sure, <clears throat> or like one of our combos. All right, there we go. But that's Demir Affinity Forge. Awesome, awesome deck here. Loved it. Uh, again, watch it on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.